Thank you, Senator, for giving me an uninterrupted opportunity to represent the harm that is coming to the patients in the American hospitals and the lack of early intervention. My name is Nicole Sirotek. I'm a registered nurse. I've been a registered nurse for over a decade. My specialty is critical care, trauma, and flight. Um, since the start of the COVID pandemic, I've actually been rebranded, I guess you can say, as a leading expert in early intervention strategies executed on a large mass scale using the FLCCC protocol, as well as um, ventilator, or COVID patient ventilator protective strategies to optimize uh, COVID patients on the ventilators. My story actually begins back in May of 2020. I was one of the original nurses that went to NYC to help with the COVID pandemic, because as we remembered, they needed nurses. Most importantly, they needed ventilators. Well, I was the whole package, a flight nurse that can manage ventilators. And when I arrived there, um, the gross negligence and the medical you know, malfeasance that happened in there and the complete medical mismanagement of these patients is what had led a, has led us to the situation that we're in right now. The pandemic and the hysteria that was created from poor public health measures and poor execution of appropriate early intervention strategies and the handicapping of medical professionals doing their job has led to where we are right now and into the crisis situation that we are in. I will use several key case studies that will represent larger uh, descriptive statistical information for what I'm going to speak of. But when I was in New York, and what continues to happen today is that many of them are not dying from COVID. Now, many people don't know about me is that I'm actually a master's prepared biochemist and I have worked extensively with the HIV uh, virus tracking uh, genetic mutations. So I feel very comfortable going toe to toe with some of these doctors here, although I am not a doctor, I'm just a nurse. But what we saw in these front lines, we knew what was happening. And when we asked for the ibuprofen, they said, no, it was contraindicated. When we asked, like, why aren't we giving them steroids? Oh, well, it's not. We're just following orders. Following orders has led to the sheer number of deaths that has occurred in these hospitals. I didn't see a single patient die of COVID. I've seen a substantial number of patients die of negligence and medical malfeasance. Um, when I was on the front lines of New York, I'm unfortunately known uh, globally viral as the nurse that was in the break room sobbing, saying that they were murdering my patients. The pharmaceutical companies had gone into those hospitals and decided to um, practice, I guess you can say, on, on the minorities, on the disadvantaged, on the marginalized populations that we know that we had no advocates for because the very agencies that should have been protecting them were closed because we were sheltering in place. Now, while I was there and I saw that the pharmaceutical companies were rolling out remdesivir onto the patients, I tried to get a hold of the IRBs. I tried to get a hold of my appropriate chain of command. I tried CMS, I tried Department of Health. And they rolled out remdesivir onto a substantial number of patients for which we all saw it was killing the patients. And now it's the FDA approved drug that is continuing to kill patients in the United States. As nurses, we've co collected a statistical or descriptive amount of information that you may not get from the doctors because for more they do quantitative data, we do qualitative data with a humanistic phenomenological approach in nursing research. And so we've collected the data from all of these patients across the country from which we have been helping patients because I formed the organization American Frontline Nurses and the Advocacy Network so nurses could advocate for these patients. And all of this data pool shows that as these patients get remdesivir, they have a less than 25% chance of survival if they get more than two doses. Now they're rolling it out on children as well and into the nursing homes or skilled nursing facilities as early intervention when as Dr. Pierre Corey and Dr. Merrick have already demonstrated that there are cost effective medications out there and we are going to see the amplification of death across our country and we haven't even touched on the vaccines for which all of our expert panels have already very well des described that situation. So I won't touch on that since many of them are by far superior to me than, than even I could ever hope to be. But I can tell you that two days ago, I, f I flew out my first 10 year old with a heart attack and I had to fight the doctor in the ER because he's like 10 year olds don't have heart attacks. And I argued back and forth for 30 minutes to force his hand to get an EKG to find out that he was had almost a complete STEMI, which is ST elevated myocardial infarction, for which you could see it lit up on the 12 lead EKG. 
And he's like, well, that's not possible. And I'm like, well, he was just vaccinated yesterday. It is very much possible. Oh, at any given time, people are getting a hold of me and the nurse advocates at American Frontline Nurses to help advocate because, as you've seen, there is victim shaming. That it does, oh, it's anxiety. Oh, it's this. But in actuality, if they put down that it was a vaccine injury, the physician, the corporation, the hospital, the clinic, they actually won't get reimbursed. So it gets labeled as anxiety or neuropathy or Guillain-Barre syndrome, when in actuality, it's very realistically a vaccine injury. Now, I'm not, uh, even though I founded American Frontline Nurses, I've traveled extensively to South America, India, and South Africa, working in hot zones, stopping the spread of the virus, and working with early intervention. And nowhere in those countries, in developing nations, do I see these issues that we see here in the United States. It's actually, I'm a very proud American citizen. I come from a family of immigrants, and my mother told me that the United States is the, the best country in the world, though granted I am biased being an American. And our level of health care has been deteriorated to substandard third world nation health care, whereas I tell people you are better off in South America in a field hospital than you are in level one trauma designer hospitals in the United States. As nurses, we are getting reports across the country from our American frontline nurses about patients not getting food, patients not getting water. How come a patient hasn't been fed in nine days? Why do I need to get a court order to force a hospital to feed a person who isn't intubated and who's literally telling you they would like food? Oh, well, you can't take your BiPAP mask off. Well, that's what us nurses are for. We're going to help you take that off and we're going to help you eat, but we're not allowed to. If you know if they're on a ventilator, they're not getting basic standards of care. I've had patients that haven't been bathed, haven't been fed, haven't been given water, haven't been turned. And if you ask me, this isn't a hospital, this is a concentration camp. That's right. Absolutely it is. <laughs> Nowhere in the United States do we isolate people for hundreds of hours at a time with no human contact. It's not even allowed in the prisons. You are not allowed to isolate a prisoner for beyond a certain extensive amount of time because it is, again, it is horrible for their mental health and is considered inhumane. However, in these hospitals now, we're allowed to isolate patients from their families for days, and you have to say goodbye to them over an iPhone, as Jennifer Bridges has just demonstrated to us, or she has to shuttle people in to see. And personally, I was fired for sneaking a Hispanic family in to say the last rights to their family. And so thank you, Senator Johnson, for giving nurses the opportunity to come and represent our patients, because as you can see, we're not often thought of as uh, leading professionals, though we are the missing link between the doctors and the patients. So thank you so much for this time. Okay. Thank you for being a nurse.